All right, so let's talk a little bit about fishing Texas rig plastic worms from the shore. This here is a, it's a seven inch B2 worm from Big Bite Baits, one of my favorites. And I want to talk a little bit about how to fish it throughout the, the spring, summer, and fall seasons. First of all, what I have here, this is a, a seven foot two, is it? Yep, seven foot two, seven foot three. 7.3 medium heavy St. Croix rod. This is a legend tournament rod, but this is a medium heavy power fast action rod. And paired with it, I've got myself a nice Shimano reel. This is a uh, 6.3 to 1 reel. And I'm using straight fluorocarbon line, 15 pound Invisix fluorocarbon line. I'm not using braid or anything like that. And the reason being is it is extremely versatile. This rod is like the jack of all trades. You can use this rod for anything, really, for bass fishing. So that is, I mean, you can tie on any kind of lure you want, and, and for the most part, and you can use it for a variety. So that's great when you're, when you're fishing from the bank. You need versatility. Line, same thing. Braid is more technique specific. Braid doesn't work as well. Say, for example, you're throwing in woody cover. Braid likes to dig into that wood. Or if you're throwing around riprap and rocks, it tends to get nicked and frayed a lot more than fluorocarbon line. Fluorocarbon is just kind of a universal jack of all trades. 15 pound, again, that's just so versatile. This setup with a, uh, a three-aught Gamakatsu extra wide gap hooks, standard wire, nothing fancy there. And then I'm using a tungsten weight. Here I'm using a quarter ounce tungsten weight because this worm, see how thin that is? It's a small, it doesn't have a lot of, of, of water resistance. So if you use a heavy weight, it's just going to go right through the water column. And that's not what you want. You want a nice slow fall through the water column. So an eighth ounce to a quarter ounce weight typically will suffice. Sometimes you might want to go to a three eighths if you're throwing in some heavy bushes and you wanted to get it down on the bushes. Um, that is about as heavy as I'd go during the, uh, for the most, most part during the spring, summer, and fall. So fishing it. Well, the best way to do this is, is you just cast out there and let the worm fall down, just straight down. Peel off some line out, out, off the rod. Don't cock the handle after you made the cast. Instead, give it some slack line, then cock the handle, and watch that line as where it enters the water. Because here, a lot of times, you know, if a fish bites it, you won't feel it because you're on slack line, so you have to watch for it. Watch that line, see if it does a twitch or bounce, something like that. That's a fish on the other line. Or sometimes the line is it's slowly sinking in the water and suddenly it speeds up. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> well, something had to grab it to do that, so there's a fish on the line. And if once it hits the bottom, reel up to it and lift up a little bit to feel, and oftentimes your line is swimming one way or the other. Well, a fish has it. So be ready to set the hook right away. And then finally, once the fish, once the it does hit the bottom, you lift up and you don't feel a fish, you don't feel the weight, you don't feel something tugging back. What you want to do is lift up on the rod and then drop the rod. And you're not reeling, you're just lifting it up and dropping it back down. So you're hopping it up the bank towards you. So you're casting out deep to shallow and just work it up. And you might have to reel up some slack eventually as it gets closer and closer to you. But the idea here is you don't want it to jump too much. As a matter of fact, when the water's really cold, say in the early spawn, or early, early spring, or in the late fall, I like to cast out and actually drag it. I'll take the rod, to, I'll just take the rod, I'll just slowly pull it. And I like to just, that gives me an idea of how far I've moved it, is just by watching how much that, how far that rod tip moves. And I'll let it drag on the bottom and give it long pauses in between. That's what I want to just, Five seconds to 30 seconds pause and, and wait. Sometimes the fish will pick it up while it's not even moving, just kind of a dead stick. And then you give it a little bit more movement, five inches, maybe eight inches movement, let it pause as you work it back up the bank towards you. That works great when it's cold. A little bit warmer out, sometimes what I'll do is I'll cast out and just do a steady, slow retrieve. Just reel it back in, swim in that worm, back up over the top of the weeds back up over um, any rocks or anything that's in the way between you and the water. Uh, and oftentimes that's where the fish are hiding and they'll come up out of it and blast it. So real, you really can't fish crankbaits sometimes from the shoreline because it'll get hung up, but you can fish a Texas rig worm just like that. So I think, think out of the box, 
you can fish it just like you would a crankbait and not get hung up in those weeds and stuff around you. So that's an excellent way to catch fish. Uh, and then finally, one other way I like to do is throw it out there and swim it back to me. Swim it over the surface. So throw it, you know, this will use a real lightweight, like an eighth ounce weight, but slow, th throw it out there, let it land on the surface and reel it back in so it just kind of swims across the surface. This is especially good time to do this is in the late spring, throughout the summer, and even in, throughout mid-fall. This is an excellent way to catch fish. They'll, they, they're used to seeing buzz baits and other topwater baits, but they're not used to seeing a plastic worm swimming along. It looks like a little snake. Uh, you get a lot more bites that way, so a little tip there. Uh, but that, you know, and then during the only exception when I'm not doing it like this is during the, the um, actual spawn. During the spawn, then I'll, I'll hang up this bait casting rod and reel, and I'll go to a spinning outfit. I'll, I'll go weightless on the worm and I'll lighten up. I'll use 10 pound line. It's still a medium heavy seven foot two, seven foot three rod. But now uh, with a real light uh, bait, the idea here is to cast over and past the, uh, the bed. It's gonna have a nice light splash down now because it doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's gonna slowly sink and you work that bait towards the nest as it's sinking. So it almost looks like it's swimming towards the nest. And that often elicits a strike out of the bass. But more important than that is the stealthy approach. When you're fishing beds, a lot of times the beds are right up against the, the bank. So don't walk up on the bank this time of year. During the spawn, get away from the edge of the shore and, and like 20, 30 feet away and see if you can't spot a bed from there and make a long cast to it that way. Or work away and get to the shoreline, but you're now 20, 30 feet away from it on the shore and cast parallel to the shore up to it. But you wanna make sure that you're away from it. You don't wanna spook that bass. And when you walk up on the bank, they can feel the vibration on, on the ground underneath or hear you or even see you, uh, and that can spook them. So stay away from the shoreline, uh, especially during the spawn and make those long casts. But even during the rest of the year when you're fishing, when you change positions, you're moving to a different spot, if you can get away from the shoreline, come around and work your way back to the spot where you want to fish, not walk along the shoreline and spook a bunch of fish. Also pay attention to your shadow. Uh, you know, a day like this, my shadow's over here, so I don't want to work my way this way and because and, now my shadow's in front of me and you might, you know, uh, that the fish might be uh, alert to your, your presence. So instead, go that way. So your face is in the sun and you're not having your shadow in front of you. So little subtle things like that make a big difference when you're fishing from the shore. And that's how I would do it with a plastic rig worm. Hope that, a Texas rig plastic worm. Hope that helps for more tips. Wait, hold on, hold on. If you watch the video this long, then you for sure don't wanna miss these two videos. All right, now this one I handpicked for you because I think this is the one you're gonna wanna see next. But this is the one that YouTube thinks that you should, you should watch. Either way, I'm in both of them, so I'll see you in a few seconds.